Oh my god. I mean, that's just shit. There's no other way to put it. That is, that is trash. That is absolute, utter, gutter, rubber. Rudder? Fuck, I'm Bidening again. It's trash. It's just garbage. Hey everybody, how's it going? So today we're going to get started working on a MacBook Pro that's not turning on. This is an A1398 MacBook Pro. We're going to try and figure out what's wrong with it. See if we can make it work again. There. Let's get started. How's everybody doing today? Hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody's having themselves a decent day. Free of the coronavirus. Doing my best to stay corona-free. And we're gonna start the stream, as always, by removing the coronavirus from this MacBook. Let's remove that coronavirus from this MacBook. Kill that corona. Die, virus. Die, virus. Die! <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna liquid damage that machine. Liquid damage? Liquid damage? It's already liquid damaged! You want to talk about poison? <laughs> I am poison! I know it's a piece of shit, Lewis, but she is my piece of shit. Hope all goes well and hope's all going well with you and your staff. Keep your head up. You're all formidable, better word than awesome. Also, I changed out the batteries a while back. And cats. My cat's tried helping, so I'm missing some, some screws. True story, feel free to replace them as well. Thank you to all involved in this repair. Thank you for the very nice letter. Batman Beyond, Outseeker remembers it. That was Derek Powers in episode 13, season one, played by Sherman Howard. One of my favorite voice actors outside of Michael Ironside in uh, any of these cartoons. Okay, so this is your standard piece of shit, 820-3332 board with the U8900 chip issue. Where, and the issue with this one, the HCR 3332, is it the, is a buck converter problem? And let's see if that's the case here or if it's actually dead. Most likely this is powering on. The customer thinks it's not powering on because they see nothing on the screen. All right, so it's taking an amp, which means this thing is turning on. This is a boring ass U8900 issue. Actually, yeah, this thing turns on already. So there's really not much to it. This just needs a U8900, and it'll work. We will get approval for that, and go on. 600 milliamps, it should be booting. This screw is stripped. So I'm going to try to put a T6 screwdriver into the T5 hole and see if that lets me remove it. Okay, that screw is so stripped that nothing's going to remove it. So you want to see a trick? I'll show you a trick. Exolite 175M, fine tip snippers. It allows you to grab under the screw, like so. And then you twist. And then once you've given it a little twist, even if it's still stripped, you should be able to grab it. I left a little love bite in the SSD, but there's no traces on the ends of this SSD. So I'm good, I don't really gotta care. There's a little love bite on the surface of it, that's fine. I give the SSD a bit of a hickey. Oh, they stripped, this is evil. You, that's evil! They stripped the screws that I can't get to with the Exolite flush cutters. Oh, come on. That's fucked up. Look, how am I supposed to fit a flush cutter in there? That's evil. Strip the other screws, not this one! You should cut your heatsink. If any computer deserved a slightly shrunk heatsink, it's this one. You piece of sh son of a bitch. Okay, so this is U8900. This is what commonly causes us to have no image or intermittent image because of shit solder joints. Uh, I'm just going to clean off all the dirt before we get started. Now, when I say shit solder joints, let's just take a look so you can get an idea what it is I'm talking about here. Yeah, that's brittle. That is some brittle, brittle solder joints. Yeah, you see how brittle this is? You see that? That's apple soldering right there. So this chip is responsible for controlling the transistors that make up the buck converter from the main power rail, PP bus G3 hot, to the GPU. And if you look at that fourth pin from the left, like the fourth pin from the left, that is just pure, 
There's no other way to put it. That's just dog shit. Like, let's just zoom all the way. Because we can. Yeah. I'm going to keep the polarizer. I may wind up going for an LED fiber light thing. But I'm definitely going to keep the polarizer. Oh my god. I mean, that's just shit. There's no other way to put it. That is, that is trash. That is absolute, utter, gutter, rubber. Rudder? Fuck, I'm biting again. It's trash. It's just garbage. So, what are we going to do here? Well, that's a great question. We're going to turn on my fume extractor. Turn on my soldering iron. I like to use a T30-KN tip with a Hakko 2032. You can see that I keep mine in immaculate condition. Tape everywhere. This is the FM2032 soldering iron. And I should have a link in the description below. And a T30-KN tip. See, it's shaped like a chisel, like a knife there at the end. I like that shape. It makes it easier to do QFN retouching like this. So what I do is I'm going to take some Amtec Flux that should never be out of stock in your store. And if it ever is, God help your shipping person. We're going to put a basic amount of flux over here, like so. We're going to take some solder. And we're going to get to work. So watch what they look like now, once this is done. So I'm just going to raise the temperature here on this iron. For some reason it's at the 750. That's not going to do. I'm going to raise it to 840. As you can see, the solder is not dragging the way I'd like. Right. So. Now, when there's a lot of flux, it can be really hard to see things. So I'm going to turn on HDR. Thank you very much to the person who pointed out that my camera actually has HDR. I'm usually using OBS in a shrunk window so that I can read chat while streaming, so I didn't even, so I can't really read what most of that stuff says. Let's see, what happens if I just like turn that all the way up for right now? So, for these moments, I charged someone $180 what was an, an SMC reset after diagnosing the machine. Am I a bad person? Do you mean SMC reset chip or SMC reset like holding the button down? I don't know. The way I see it is this. Like if, the, if, if, it was, if you knew that that happened to your grandma, how would you feel about it, you know? So our business model here is like we never charge for shit like that. But for the, th the services that we do offer, we make money on. Like for, for the stuff that we do do, for the data recoveries, for the, for, for, a, for the clicking hard drives, for the board repairs, like we charge our fee. But for the easy stuff or the simple stuff like that, like if I'm hitting, just pressing a button that's in plain view, I'm, I, don't, I don't bill people for that. And I've gotten a lot of crap for that. I've gotten like a lot over the years, like, you know, Aren't you in business to make money? Why are you doing things for free? You're devaluing your craft. I'm like, not really. You know, it, it really comes down to what they, how they feel when they fi figure it out. But not even so much that. It's about wanting to retain that person long term. So I would say I don't think you're even necessarily a bad person morally. I just think that if you doing that, it's going to be more difficult to retain business long term. So if you tell them that that was the only issue and you just say, just leave a tip, you have someone who trusts you for life and who's going to tell every single person they know to only go to you, nobody but you, for the rest of their life. And that's a good thing. 
that's a good thing. And you kind of don't want to fuck that up. So be careful there. It's not even that I'm a good guy. Don't get it twisted, Mad Mods. It's just... It's, it, how do I put this? I thought you weren't going to come today. I, I'm the boss. I, may, I can change my mind and make it up as I please. Is your bike there or no? Also, the, the XT90 connector broke off of my uh, wiring. So I well, had to come here to resolder it anyway. So I figured I might as well do a stream. I, and I rewired a bit of my bike so it looks better. But anyway. Like, I, I, don't, necess I don't know if there's a tr a such thing as true altruism. I just think that there are people that want to make money and they want to... You know, they want to make money. There's just a different way to go about trying to make the money. Because I'm as greedy as anybody else. It's just I try to go about it in a manner where I can sleep at night. James, knowing how to fix a problem is valuable, but you have to balance that with your reputation. What's worth more? Yeah, again, for me, it's not even about the, the not making money thing. It's not about, like, devaluing the craft or saying, you know, making money is wrong. For me, if I tell that person, I just had to press a button and now it works, and I give it back to them, and they go, the other place wanted $200 to fix this, I now have their trust for life. And that person is going to... It's kind of like the way coronavirus spreads. Like, you know, you're going to talk to someone, you get them sick, you talk to three people, you get those three people sick, those three people, to, you know, uh, hang out with another ten people, they get those people sick, then those ten people get another ten people sick, and so on and so on. But it's the opposite. It's, 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 it spreads in a good way. So it uses the same transmission vector as coronavirus, but you're spreading positivity rather than coughing and misery and occasionally death. The idea is to get people to want to do business with you because of that. Because there were a lot of people that said that when I did that CBC News piece, Lewis would have never given that away for free, or he's an idiot if he did that, or blah, blah, blah. And it's like, not really. Nine out of ten people are going to say, just replace the display cable. I don't want that bent back piece of shit in my $3,000 computer. And they pay the 75 to 150 to replace it. The one out of ten that can't pay to do that, they will remember that, I could have fucked them over. I had them. And the thing is, like, how you, how you deal with people when you have an option to fuck them over but you don't, or how you deal with people when you could be technically 100% in the right to just take them, take, the, take their money over, over something that's really basic, I think that defines character to some extent. You know, there is a, like, there's a lot of stuff that we do here. Like, don't, get, don't get it twisted. If I'm, people will say, like, you know, that, that cable is $5 and you charge 100 to replace it, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, for the things that I do, I do make money off of it. But at the same time, it just comes down to like, if I had to SMC reset, like if I had to do what's written in the manual that came with the product, if I had to hold down the power button to get the machine to turn on, I don't know, how would I feel if I was on the other end of that transaction? And again, it's not even about that 180, because if I give that away and I explain what was wrong with it, and then I just say, just leave a tip, and then they leave without paying anything, I, in that moment, you think I made no money, but I actually made $10,000. Because the amount of publicity that I'm going to get from that one individual, that's $10,000 right there. It's not now. I don't get to see it now. I may not see it in the next two months. But three or six years from now, I'll see it. And then everybody else is going to just say, he was just lucky. He's lucky. That fuck. I put in all this work, but Lewis is lucky. That's why he got that. It's because he made those videos. I installed Linux Mint on an acquaintance's laptop to win some random updates. She paid me $40, so has half of it. <laughs> Thank Yeah, there, there are a lot of people that will say that, you know, Lewis was just lucky. That's the reason that he got here. And the same people that I've heard say that, that I know or that I, or that I know the employees of, because I know the people that work at their firms, they were billing people $150 for a charge port and then giving them a free charger just to be nice, when in reality the only problem they had is a bad charger. And that business was spending $12,000 a month on AdWords at a time that I was spending $0 a month on AdWords. Six years later, I have more business than they do, and I spent a lot less money on advertising. Why? Because this is a better form of advertising. Now, you just so happen to be doing something nice while you're doing it. Is that really altruistic? Is it altruistic if you're actually trying to do something else? I don't know. But what I know is that the customer doesn't really care. They don't care if I'm being altruistic or just trying to kill two birds with one stone make more money in the long term, and make them happy without, you know, bending them over the coals for holding down the power button in the short term. 
And that's the way I see it. I will charge 300 or 400 for board repairs that I find simple because there's no reasonable expectation that the average person is gonna do that shit or do all the research to learn how to do that on their own. And there are a lot of things that we charge for because oh, there's a lot of repairs that we do where, you know, like with logic board repair, well, I could spend four hours on one fucking board and get nowhere and if I don't get anywhere, I don't charge. So on the, on the board repairs that do work, you have to charge to make up for it. But my marketing strategy is such that I try to avoid billing people for the super easy shit. You know, like removing lint from a charge port kind of thing. Or my, my favorite is the iPhone repair shops that a customer would come in. And this is what makes this so fucking despicable to me. So this is something that, that used to drive me nuts. With the iPhone 4 and 4S, I know, I know, I'm old, I get it, but... Uh, you know, uh, you, you, can, you don't have to have a cane to have been around in the iPhone 4 and 4S repair days. There would be a little piece of foam over the screen c uh, connector, over the screen plug. So this is the, this is the port on the phone. This is the plug on the screen. And then there's a metal plate that goes over it. Now, if you don't have a piece of foam on that, the metal plate is here, the plug is here. So if they drop it, then it just unplugs. If you don't put a little piece of foam there, it could be anything. You could put a piece of, uh, of belly button lint in there. It doesn't matter. Something to slam it shut. The moment they fucking lay that thing down on a desk, especially since the cable is bending over like this, it looks like your arm It's kind of bending over, it's going to pop up. And there are places that when the customer came back with the screen, they would say, oh, yeah, it's only 10 or 20 bucks. It was an easy thing. And what makes me fucking sick, disgusted, is that the customer would then say, thank you so much, it was only 20 bucks, thank you! When in reality, the entire reason they had to come back there is because you're a stupid fuck that didn't put the piece of foam in the fucking screen connector. Ugh! But I'm not salty. Let's see if we get an image on this, but before we do that, where this, you, you see how this was long screwed off here? I gotta reattach this, this screw hole, because that's, that's, that's kind of nasty. It's not even really integrity, because like, uh, people will give me credit for being altruistic, and it really is not altruism. It's the desire to make money. I will make more money if I don't charge you for the basic thing than I will make if I charge you for the basic thing. That is a shitty battery plug from a shitty aftermarket battery. Let's boot up and see if it boots into a different operating system. And you boot. So their operating system likely just needs a little bit of fixing, maybe a reinstall, and that's that. It boots up into an operating system, and it works. So with this MacBook, what we needed to do was a little bit of chopping on the screen cable. We may wind up replacing that and redoing U8900 because the solder joints on this U8900 were absolutely awful. It is typical on the 2012 a1398 15 inch MacBook Pro Retina with board model 820 3332. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.